Hey guys, this is uh, my AP Psych FRQ tutorial. I'm going to be giving you some tips about how to approach them, some specifics about how to write them, and then we'll go over some examples and how they're scored as well. Uh, these questions are based off of uh, for anywhere from uh, 2015 to 2017 uh, release questions from uh, College Board. A little bit of general information. Uh, remember, uh, before we get into this general information, that it is up to you guys to take the responsibility to uh, prepare yourself for the FRQs and the multiple choice portion of the exam. So use this tutorial um, as a way to direct you on how to personally prepare. Um, I would also say that the most important way to prepare for the exam uh, is to have a deep knowledge of all of the AP Psychology content um, that is the the topics that we've covered, perspectives, and vocabulary. Okay, so let's uh, start out by uh, talking about uh, what you'll need to bring, uh, the logistics of the FRQ, and some ways to appropriately uh, address the prompts. So when you get there, um, after you do your multiple choice portion of the AP exam, you'll uh, be presented with um, two free response uh, essay prompts. Um, you're going to have 50 minutes to complete the two of them. So you need to divide your time up accordingly. Uh, when you get the prompts and you get going on it, make sure that you read both the prompts first um, and then uh, what we found is that it's uh, best to decide which one you're more comfortable with and then write that one first. Watch your time carefully, pace yourself so that you can respond to both questions. So keep an eye on the clock. When you are going into it, uh, when you've decided which one to do, uh, you're gonna go ahead and break down the question, uh, which means that you need to determine what they're asking you, determine the question's intent. Um, on the side in the booklet, on your paper, um, formulate some notes, um, outline what order you want to go into, write down key terms that you want to make sure that you put into the FRQ, write down those definitions if necessary. Lastly, once you've organized, uh, then you're going to write the essay itself. Okay, a little more general information here. Um, some things that you're going to want to make sure that you do is you're going to want to use um, a blue pen. I know that sounds kind of silly, uh, but it's uh, brighter and it pops for uh, the reader's eyes. Um, they're reading a lot of essays, and so a change in color oftentimes will help them uh, kind of perk up a little bit. Make sure that you write legibly, very clear. If it's hard to read, then the reader's often going to not take the time to try to figure out exactly what you wrote. So make sure that you write legibly. Um, if you are in a hurry and you're writing very quickly, it's a good idea that after you're done writing your essays that you go back and rewrite any words that may be illegible. Like I said, the graders take about one to two minutes to grade each essay. Bad handwriting uh, slows them down, and they might miss or give up on the items that are illegible, and then you wouldn't get the points. One of the two essays uh, usually seems to include information from one of the last units or chapters that we cover uh, near the end of the textbook. So that's going to be things on um, abnormal psychology, therapy, social psychology. Uh, those tend there tends to be at least one question on those topics. All right, so let's uh, get into breaking down uh, the text um, of the question here. Okay, so now that you've talked about, you know, some of our general approaches to the FRQs, now I'm going to kind of get into the specifics on how to read and break down the prompts. All right, first of all, uh, you're going to do a little step-by-step -step process here. Okay, allocate no more time than 30 seconds, all right, to freaking out about what the question content is, all right? Uh, then you're going to go through, you're going to read the entirety of both questions like I mentioned before. Take one to two minutes to break down each question. So we talked about breaking it down, choosing one to break down. Make sure that you're not using too much time to break down the question. Uh, you don't want to spend all your time outlining when you should be writing your prompt. Write notes on the actual test question. 
all right, next to where you need to uh, be answering a certain things. Make sure you can take notes right on there. Do that. Take advantage of the, the prompt and the area that they give you. Okay, you might even uh, go in circle action words um, like compare, contrast, define, explain, apply, etc. Um, that need to be addressed in the in the response that you're giving. It's also a good idea, uh, just so it pops a little bit, underline critical terms or topics that you need to hit in your response. And like I said before, write down those key definitions, those terms, those ideas, the researchers or experiments that you're going to be giving in your answer. Anything that comes to your mind that you think is applicable to that prompt. Okay, so writing the essay. Okay, you're going to want to begin pretty quick. All right, uh, remember... Uh, the one that you felt the most comfortable with is the one that you're going to want to start with. All right. Do not waste time with a lengthy introduction or conclusion. The readers aren't looking for that. This is not an English FRQ. This is not a history FRQ. There's no format that has to be followed. You do, however, need to write incomplete sentences. Okay. Uh, do not, again, do not include an introductory or concluding sentence that repeats the question. You don't need to do that. Jump right into the answer. Answer each component of the question in the order in which it appears within the question. One, that's going to keep you more organized. And two, it's going to make it easier for the reader to grade. Each new concept should have a new paragraph. Okay, And I want you guys to place at least two lines, um, spaces after each paragraph. That way, if you need to add something back in, you have a space to do that in the correct spot. Again, for the reader uh, to help them out, to grade your paper, to give you the best chance of been, them being able to see all the points you made, you're going to want to underline your main ideas. Okay, number four up here, um, if you're going to add text in the middle of your response, like you forgot something, you need to go back, you need to make sure that you clearly indicate where that text should go within your answer. Maybe draw an arrow. You're going to put that in the space that you gave uh, between the paragraphs and then put an arrow to where you uh, need to add that information in. Be concise okay, and to the point. Don't waste your time explaining complicated concepts unless it was directly asked to uh, for you to do that within the question. One thing that's very, very important is that you're going to want to avoid contradictions. Okay, you're not going to be rewarded points uh, for directly contradictory, contradictory information within your essay. So make sure that if you're just guessing, well, actually, just don't guess. That's a better way to put it. And number seven, use psychological terms, proper names, theories, theorists, and psychologists. Use appropriate examples that are clearly relevant to the point being addressed. Okay, something that's really important is that they should not... Be hypothetical or from your personal experience. They need to be good examples that were talked about within the text or from any legitimate study guide that you guys have been looking at. Spend approximately 15 to 20 minutes to actually write each essay. So that means a breakdown of what the question is asking, a little bit of time, a few minutes to write your outline, and then about 15 to 20 minutes to write your uh, each essay. Okay, when you are done, if you still have time, it's good to go back. Make sure that you didn't have any type, any uh, written errors, um, that everything looks the way that it should, that it's easy to read, that you've underlined the things you want. Basically putting any finishing touches on your essay that you think is necessary. All right, so I kind of alluded to a few of these things, but what not to do? Or what should you not do? Okay, do not panic. You get in there, take a breath, realize that you're going to be answering these questions. If you don't know all of the points to it, that's okay, but do not panic. Okay, if you're clueless apart about a part of the essay, do your best to write something relevant. If you are really clueless, skip it. Skip that portion of the essay. Do not guess or make something up. You run the risk of contradicting yourself in another part of the essay. Okay, so just remember, missing one point is not going to ruin your score. Losing focus through panic could
could definitely ruin your score because then you're never able to focus. You don't say what you need to say. You need to be calm. You need to breathe. You need to apply the knowledge that you have. All right, so again, I'm, in, this is, I'm kind of saying this over and over again, but readers are not allowed to give points for an essay that isn't an outline or bullet points. So I want to, you know, you have to use sentences, complete sentences and paragraphs. They don't need the introductions. They don't need a conclusion paragraphs, but you need to address these in complete sentences. Each point of the essay can be done in a separate paragraph, which we're going to see here in a couple minutes. Okay, you're not going to want to make sure you don't go overboard. Don't ramble and write everything you know about a specific uh, about a topic. Be as focused and specific to the question, and be as can clear as clear and concise as you possibly can. Um, when you're asked to define a word, don't use the actual word in the definition. You need to define what that means. That's why they're asking you about it. Again, do not restate the question in your essay. Be clear, concise. Do not describe a feeling or a cognitive process if asked to describe a behavior. Remember, behaviors are observable. If they're asking you about a cognitive process, then I'll, you know, go for it. But if they're asking you about describe a behavior or describe what this person is doing, they're asking you about a behavior that's observable. Remember that. Do not give simple descriptions. Provide complete yet concise explanations of what you learned about in the text. All right, so now we're going to move into talking a little bit about the um, some specific FRQs that were presented um, in 2017. All right, and so we're going to look at some of uh, the things that the formatting, I guess you could say, what you might expect on an FRQ. Okay, so you can see here, this is the uh, the prompt, or most of the prompt here, of uh, the FRQ. You can't quite see the bottom. It's cut off just a tad. But remember, you're going to make sure that you really read the directions for what you have to answer. Okay, those are the directions. This is the format you're going to see. All right, then you're going to go down, and you're going to make sure that you read. After you've read the directions, you're going to read the prompt. All right, there, in this case, there are two portions to the prompt. Okay, make sure that you understand some of the words that are discussed here. Okay, cogent is a word that you might not be that familiar with. It says you should present a cogent argument based on your critical analysis of the question posed. Okay, cogent, in case they use that term again, means it of an argument or case to be clear logical and convincing. Okay, so as you read the prompt, this is where you're going to want to start to underline star important aspects of the information given as I discussed in the other in the other slides earlier. Okay, so this is what what it is. You take the time, might want to pause this, read over what the question is asking you right now, um, and then when you're ready to move on uh, to the next slide and look at some of the responses and so forth, uh, go ahead and do so. Okay, so this is uh, some information from College Board. Uh, they uh, give you guys some general considerations um, about how to write um, this essay. Uh, so the answers, like I said here, uh, again, I'm just going to go ahead and just uh, say, read these over. You don't need to hear me say them. Read these over right now. Pause this. Read over what they are looking at. And then when you're ready to move on, uh, go ahead and press play on the video. All right, so with each one of these prompts, they're going to have different scoring guidelines. Um, the scoring guidelines, like I said, will be dependent upon the prompt that is presented. And so these scoring, some, some, sometimes these prompts will be worth seven points, eight points. Some of them times will only be worth four or five points, uh, depending on the length of the question and what they're looking for. So in this case, this is a breakdown of the uh, first prompt. And it then this is 
kind of what the the readers when they're when they're scoring this this is some information that they get things that they're looking uh to score think specific things that they are looking for within that essay of what to do and what not to do so again take a second here pause look over what uh the reader is supposed to be grading for in terms of the points uh for uh this first prompt from 2017. When you're ready, move on to the next page. Okay, so now that you've had a chance to kind of look over what they're uh, the readers were supposed to be grading for. Um, now come the examples. This is an example of a person that scored um, well on this uh, prompt. They got a score of a six out of seven. Now, I'm not going to read it over. You guys can go ahead and do that too. But what I do want to point out is I want to point out how they broke down this question, how they use complete sentences, okay, how they use complete sentences in order to address each part of the prompt. And then they broke each one of those down into paragraphs. You also notice that there are no introduction paragraphs. It just literally jumps right into the question and answering the prompt. This is uh, a little bit more from that person's response as they go through answering each part of this. You can see that they got a great score even though they crossed out some things. Notice that the handwriting was very easy to read. This person didn't feel necessary to underline, but they were very clear in the way that they broke up their paragraphs. All right, so after this was scored and read, these are kind of what the overview of that scoring analysis uh, was and the reasoning uh, behind uh, their score that they received. Okay, they received a six on this. Take a few minutes here, read over why they got the score that they did and what they were lacking. When you're ready, you can go ahead and press play and move on to the next slide. Okay, so now we're going to look at another example here, uh, and this one still got a passing score, but wasn't in the advanced uh, score range. Okay, they maybe you know looks like they started out strong, but then didn't have um, all of the information that was necessary in order to score all seven points. But they were still able to get a passing score on this. Notice that this person again took the idea here of doing a paragraph per topic that was needed to be addressed. This person, however, did do a little bit of underlining of the main ideas. Second portion of the same response. All right, a little bit of scoring commentary on this one. Again, it tells you this is uh, from College Board. It tells you what they got and why, what they were lacking, and why they didn't receive points. If there was any contradictory information, those types of things are going to be stated in here uh, for your learning purposes.
read this over, then move on. All right, so now moving on to an example of somebody that did not pass. They got a few points, which is better than none, but they had a failing score. Now, in this case, you'll notice that the person still did a pretty good job of organization. Um, they really stayed with it in part A, trying to be clear about what they were saying. But you can see that they were a little brief in their response. Now, I say to be concise and to the point, but you still need to fully uh, explain these different topics. Uh, down when you get down to part B, you'll notice that the person went away from the um, that organization that they had in part A and went more into a paragraph form answering these questions. They did not underline. That makes it harder for the person to see. They might not have also uh, hit on the correct points. Jumping back up to part A in this case, uh, you'll notice that they did use bullet points. And the problem with that is that they didn't elaborate enough to make each one a paragraph. You notice that it is only like one sentence um, at best. And so that's not going to be enough in order to earn those points, even if they got the gist of the definition correctly. It wasn't precise enough. So you need to make sure that you understand the content so that you can answer these more completely and use examples if necessary. All right, so that was all of that person's response. And then this gives you the explanation as to why okay, they did not do well. Okay, so now moving on to the what you can do right now, now that you've seen what it looks like to respond to these, uh, these prompts, what a, an advanced score looks like, what a passing score looks like, what a failing score looks like. Uh, now it's your turn to take the responsibility right now and practice. Um, you can either get some of these uh, practice prompts from your teacher, um, if they printed them off of College Board. I do that for my students. Um, you could also access these on your own by going to College Board and directing yourself to the practice areas. They do have release questions, um, usually from about the last five years, um, all the way up to the year previous to uh, this testing date. And so uh, it's a good idea to go in there Look at how they're setting up the questions, the types of questions that they're, that they're uh, asking in those prompts, and to be able to prepare yourself, looking and analyzing the information in a similar way that we just did. Another thing that you're going to want to do is you want to get some practice. Okay? Maybe you've done that in your class. Maybe you haven't. Okay? Uh, you need to get some practice in, in how to respond to these in complete sentences. All right? So what you're going to do is you're going to get a uh, response question on Mr. Campbell. All right, so if you're in my class, you can get one from me. I'll get some printed out. Or you can go directly to the College Board and download them from the College Board website. Okay, you're going to read the question and use my uh, FRQ tips handout that uh, I'm giving you. And then you could also use this tutorial here, this um, overview, uh, to also kind of give you some help. But basically, the, my tips handout has the same information that's provided on this presentation. Uh, for this practice, uh, because it is practice, you can use your book to help you um, or a study guide. Remember, when you're when we're doing the practice, we don't have to worry about as much of the time constraint as you'll have on the day of the test. But you're still going to want to make sure that you're picking up your time here, uh, that you spend no more than 10 minutes for the first FRQ on pre-writing. Um, on the real exam, you're going to want to spend at most five minutes on the pre-writing. Okay, so uh, that's something that as we practice, you're going to get better at it. Uh, and remember, this is on this is on you. You need to take the initiative, take the responsibility, 
to get this practice in to prepare yourself. Okay, so then after organizing, breaking down the question, then that's when you're gonna to wanna to give your first attempts into writing your response. Okay, I would suggest that you get the question, right? You, you either download it, you get it from me, you write your response, you do all that stuff, and then afterwards you're gonna go back and you're gonna look at how uh, the given responses that were from College Board, how they did on the advance to passing to failing. Remember, use the tips information to help focus your writing. Use complete sentences and paragraphs. Spend no more than 25 minutes actually writing your essay. You're gonna wanna do even less than that uh, on the day of the test so that you have enough time to go back and make any changes that might be necessary. Okay, so then after you are finished uh, your response, with your responses, um, you're gonna pick up the corresponding scoring and sample response packet from me if you're in my class. Or again, you can download the appropriate things from College Board and go back and check how you did. Grade yourself. Um, be analytical. Be real with yourself. Know if you need to work on those things a little bit more. Then read over the scoring guideline for your FRQ and then score yourself. Or if you want to, you could have another person grade that for you and then talk about it with you. Okay, after grading the FRQ, go over the score, see where you may improve. And then look over the sample response in the packet, compare and contrast your responses to the example responses that were given from College Board. Now you're gonna to wanna to repeat this procedure for as many FRQ questions as you would like to do, or as you think is necessary to be able to get you prepared for the formatting of the, uh, the essay. Now, I, yeah, I can't tell you, I can't tell you what's going to be uh, the question topics. But you can prepare yourself with the content. If you're ready for the multiple choice exam and you know the vocabulary of psychology well, then you should be able to, with practice with this FRQ stuff, you should be able to do well on the FRQ prompts. Thanks for watching.